In this part of chapter 3, we'll be discussing the nervous system. It is a collection of nerve cells that coordinates all parts of the body, and it has neurons. And these neurons are responsible for receiving stimuli, transmitting impulses to different parts of the body, and if damaged, they cannot be regenerated. The nervous system has two classifications, the central and peripheral nervous system. So in the central nervous system, that includes the brain and the spinal cord, and peripheral nervous system is a network of nerve cells that's divided into two systems, the voluntary system, which you have control over, and the autonomic, also known as involuntary nervous system, that you do not have control over. The central nervous system consists of the brain, and the brain is the um, actually headquarters of the entire nervous system as it tells everybody what to do in the body, tells every cell, every part of the body what to do. So three main divisions of the brain include the cerebrum, cerebellum, and the brain stem. Within the brain, there is fluid similar to the fluid in blood known as plasma. It's called cerebrospinal fluid. It circulates through the brain and spinal cord and acts as a cushion to protect the brain. It's also where the exchange of food and waste occurs. In part of the central nervous system is the spinal cord. It's a column of soft nerve tissue and it is continuous as part of the lower part of the brain. It is enclosed by a vertebral column which is made of bones and also has about 31 pair of nerves. Very vulnerable to injury as you know you're all aware of spinal cord injury and paralysis that can occur. In this slide you see a picture that is really giving you an example of the brain and how it connects to the spinal cord. And you can see the various nerves that are coming off that spinal cord and the different types of nerves. The peripheral nervous system is um, made up of sensory and motor nerves and it is the part that exits the spinal cord, so it goes to the body. So all of the information and signals that are sent to and from the body. And if that is serious, seriously damaged, that part of the body won't work. Fortunately, it is protected well against injury, but severe injuries can damage it. The autonomic nervous system is something you do not have control over. It's involuntary, and that controls your heart rate, digestion, sweating, breathing, and any other autonomic body processes. The skeletal system consists of about 206 bones, and in an anatomy class, you'll be going through each one of those bones and every part of the bone. For this course, you really want to know the major bones, so if you are helping a patient that has you know, some type of injury to a bone, at least you can classify the major bones. And their bones are made of living cells, they're surrounded by calcium that makes them strong. The skull is a bone that actually bony structure that's at the top of the spinal column and it houses the brain, some glands such as the pituitary gland, and um, the centers of special senses. So there are two parts of the skull, the brain or cranium and the face. Blood vessels and nerve trunks pass from the brain through openings in the skull. They can be fractured. It doesn't give. So for instance, uh, my son's friend was in a car accident severe damage to the, his head, the skull was fractured. They literally, literally had to take out a part of his skull, reconstruct it, and put it back in. So, um, you know, very sensitive area, obviously, if it gets damaged because it does protect the brain. In this picture, you can see the various parts of the skull and understand what, you know, makes up the face as well. So familiarize yourself generally in this area. As I said, in an anatomy class, you'll get more involved in the various bones and all of their functions and parts. The spinal column has irreg irregularly shaped bones known as vertebrae, and it forms a very strong but flexible column, obviously, so that we can bend and move, and it's bound together by these ligaments that allow for that movement. It can be damaged by disease and injury. It's broken down into different areas. The cervical spine is more of the neck area. The thoracic is the chest and abdominal area. And then the lumbar is the lower back. And the sacrum is more of going down even further towards the butt. 
So for our purposes in first aid and emergency care, becoming familiar with these structures is important on a general level so that you have some knowledge and understanding to how this system works.